here at this case and what we're seeing is an adult with deep bite and we're also seeing retrocline quite moderately retrocline upper low end sizes lost one six upper molar first molar and I do suggest that the 1.7 be distalized to create more space for a future implant here because that's what I understand is going to be done. So this is a, a great case actually for somebody who's intermediate level in aligners. However, you also see a bit of a midline shift. Again, we can do some asymmetric IPR to correct that and possibly gain some space from expansion and incisor proclination to find the space to correct this midline but um, not a difficult case so I'm just going to show you how I'm going to now plan this case. That is transverse at the end okay so I'm seeing the T1 and T2, and I do think they're quite advanced. This is a lot for an adult who's in the late 20s, 30s, and it will create an asymmetric arch when you expand the six so much, the upper first molar, but not the second molar. So we are going to make these teeth unmovable in this case, and we are gonna reduce the expansion. I think it's a little bit too much for an adult, and possibly, remove it more from the posterior region and uh, I am going to get the seven a little bit more out here okay I think some expansion here would benefit we are also going to distalize and derotate this seven which will actually help with creation of space and what I'm going to do a trick I'm going to make this unmovable okay and as I make this unmovable and you watch this space as I increase this space I think I can't increase the space. Okay, usually you can make that unmovable and in, uh, and let's just do command Z, command Z. Now if you make a mistake, just to undo, undo. So what I'm gonna do is distalize this too. So let's just pick it up and distalize it because we really do need more space to put an implant in that region. So I would say perhaps a 10 millimeter should be enough or we could just make it nine millimeter and some derotation of that seven. Okay, so as you see, as I derotate seven, how we're creating space. So some derotation is going to help. All right, so I think that's nice and adequate space for an upper molar. And if we, another way of looking at it is we can actually measure this one so each square is a millimeter so we can also measure the two six and make it similar to the two six so I'm seeing some similarity okay and I and I kind of like this now all right so I've got my seven set and now I'm going to lock this tooth meaning this is where it's going to be okay before I lock it I'm also going to add some buckle root talk on it okay and I'm going to lock this too. It means this is where I want the final position of this molar. So let's have a look. Yeah, it's not looking like in cross bite. So again, I'm going to, let's see where it was before because it's important to see. Yeah, so it's looking like it. So we are going to also do some, um, I think it's a little bit too expanded. We're going to lingually move this and it probably needs a little bit more buckle movement, okay? So I'm gonna unlock this again and I'm gonna buckly move it. We don't wanna end up in a cross bite. So let's have a look again from this side that looks a little bit better and I think some lingual movement of this lower seven because it doesn't need to be this buckle and possibly some distal movement, yeah. So let's see where it was, where it is, yeah, we're gonna have a look at that actually let's remove the space okay um, yeah so I'm just gonna do a bit of what we call buckle root torque here and uh, let's just have a look again yeah it does still look like it's in cross bite so I think we're gonna have to move it just a bit more buckly now it's important we understand how much buckle movement we've done. So if I look at it, oh, I've hardly done any buckle movement. So now I'm even more confident 
that I can move it a bit more buckly, okay? Because it was literally nothing. And look at this side, the sevens, if anything, coming in a bit. All right, so now I can see how much expansion I've done and it looks pretty good, okay? A bit more on the premolars here, but this is what's needed. The four here was a little bit in. I like it. I like the way it is now. And I think I'm just looking at the symmetry of the arches. I'm liking it, okay? So we've got now a nice, now we're going to lock this too. Let's just lock this one too because I think it's important that we've got these positions jammed in we've got this space locked in okay and i am now going to remove the superannuation so we've got the transverse setting right the sagittal is the easy one here because she was always class one to begin with and we've kind of created her back to a class one right i would be putting an attachment here because i think it's needed and um yeah, because we've got a lot of push here. We're also going to add an attachment here. And I like twin attachments, by the way. So I'm going to add a double attachment on this. One of them will be on the distal buckle cusp, the other one on the mesial buckle cusp. And one more thing I will do, I'm going to unlock this tooth again. I think it needs a bit of, uh, I think it's tipped a bit too much. So we're just going to untip it. Now, these are just estimations. So obviously in refinement, we're going to have to look where the root position is. All right, so I've got my transverse, my sagittal, correct. Now it is the vertical. So let's see, they have intruded the upper anteriors a lot, okay? Not a lot, uh, uh, moderately. Now I don't like that because I looked at the small aesthetics of this patient and I saw that she's showing about the right amount of incisors, okay? Now some amount of intrusion is needed. When we are going to procline upper centrals, we do need some amount of intrusion. But what is lacking here is the amount of palatal root torque. It's a very um, unpredictable movement. So I'm actually going to increase it. Okay. Um, also, I think it's a really wide lateral. I'd like to do a horizontal attachment there, not vertical, because they're, they're doing more vertical movements. So horizontal attachments are better when you're doing vertical deep bite corrections. Now you see the one, two edge is a little bit uh, more extruded than the one, one, two, one. I would like to bring the one, one, two, one down a bit more if possible. And uh, here, so how is our deep bite correction gonna come from here to there? Well, mostly we'll have to be intrusion of lower incisors. So we're just gonna take them as a group and I'm gonna move them. Now let's have a look how much we've moved them uh, so we have intruded them again m very mild to moderately it's not even a lot of intrusion so I think I could go for it what I'm also going to do is just slightly extrude the upper molar uh, the lower molars and premolars because that will help with deep bite correction and uh, I think this side also a little bit now I am going to change attachments as I go along in a sec too so I've got my vertical right. As I've got my vertical right, I hate these beveled attachments on any teeth. So I'm going to put the correct attachments, which I think work best with SPARC, are those conventional attachments, right? So they work pretty well. I'm just not a fan of bevel. Now, there are orthodontists who love beveled. I'm just not a fan of them. I don't like them. I find that they don't work as well than a conventional big long lever like this. So I prefer to have a big lever, no bevels, conventional attachments, and I am going to change them now. Now I could have told um, spark technicians to do it, but sometimes to avoid back and forth, I'm happy with this. I don't like that the marginal ridge of the four is higher than the five, so we are going to just bring it down a bit. Okay, and now we are going to just rotate it a bit right so i'm starting to like this now you know you don't really need too much extrusion here because the deep bite isn't massive and a lot of the deep bite correction is going to come from proclination of incisors we do have lingual root torque here and um, now just let's look at the attachment you see how the three two 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 they've got quite a lot of movement well, definitely 4-2 needs an attachment, right? So see how much it's moving. And I'm not sure I want all attachments going at a line of one. So I want to make sure that they go on a line of one. 
and um, let's see where the new attachments coming on because I don't want double attachments so that's ridiculous I don't want an attachment coming later on and we're gonna remove that when it comes on right so I don't want this one I want this one from a line of one and uh, when the uh, attachments are orange I think they uh, mean collision get a buckle root dog here yeah i think they mean collision okay but i often ignore those orange and blue because i don't ever get debond of attachments now let's remove the super let's have a look let's remove the arch we're going to work out the ipr in a sec all right i just have a look at t1 and t2 now this ipr is somewhat minimal and i think it is purely to avoid back black triangles and if it is for black triangles i'd prefer at least 0.2 and i think it's quite symmetric as well so i'm liking the symmetry of the ipr it's just minimal ipr and as i'm uh, doing this i'm also correcting some of the angulations all right uh, possibly canine again don't like the beveled attachment you need a vertical here and possibly a four millimeter which is l nice and long for a canine right now in spark I will often put more attachments than when it comes to uh, Invisalign I find that spark has just that nice flexibility now this is quite a lot of movement right so we are going to slow it down I think it would be good to get some class to elastic here too I actually think it'll be good to just have even if it's nighttime wear to be honest I think we are going to actually um, add a button cut out there so I'm gonna add a button on the 4.7 it is going to be helpful and I like it on the mesio buckle cusp for ease of bonding and I think if patient just wore it at night it is going to help with that distalization movement there now when we distalize a seven we do get reciprocal effect I still think I, I still think yeah I think that's not bad I would like to get some root uprighting here as we distalize yeah okay so I like this a bit more I'm liking this a lot more now let's look at the lower IPR I think the patient needs a lot more IPR in the lower arch so I am going to look at making it more symmetric again patient being almost class one now what we're seeing here is that the midline is shifting and I think it was always shifted so we might do some asymmetric IPR she does have really large lateral incisors so we are able to do a bit more um, on this side and I think we could safely even avoid this one here so it's a matter of planning your IPR. Now I like the way this is. It makes sense to do some asymmetric IPR. Now patient will not notice that the you know three two will be slightly smaller than the four two, and in the refinement set we could always do a little bit more if needed. So let's look at the overjet. Now it looks like an open overjet, but I rather that at the start because I can easily retract these or. Um, or procline these in a refinement set so I'd rather start with this level now the only bevel attachment left is this one I think so we're just going to go back and we're going to add now when I have an elastic hook I will often add a three millimeter vertical attachment not four so let's have a look yeah this is looking good there's a lot of extrusion on those premolars maybe I will reduce it slightly and and there's no need for intrusion here I feel that premolar was intruding right and this one was intruding so we don't want intrusion and yeah that looks a bit better the four doesn't need this much extrusion we're just going to relieve it a bit I think overall it's good to be honest I'm going to unlock that tooth again it needs a bit more vertical 
movement okay so now I'm gonna lock it again um, you can see the two here seven here is unmovable which I like so we don't need to move these side sevens well let's look at our intrusion extrusion so T1 T2 this side's more balanced in terms of curve of speed correction the overjet is increasing but I rather that in this set it's really important that we get the space for the implant we've got class one here space for the implant and I think it's looking pretty good all right so the last thing I'm going to look at is the number of aligners okay now in this case because a lot of my diploma students know what to do they've already ordered 40 upper lower aligners on average for an adult for the first set something like this I'll be getting 40 45 upper lower aligners I believe I can increase velocity no not not now so I'd have to submit it to a technician now, I really like this so I would just do 40 aligners maybe 45 so what I'm gonna do is ask the technician in my notes here and say hi do not change anything except my 3d changes simply repost upper lower active I think 45 aligners would be better. There is a lot of distillation on that seven. So the slower the distillation, the more predictable. Simply repost upper lower active 45 aligners, no other changes. And then I'm very particular that, you know, just in case somebody didn't tick that box, true gen material. I absolutely love the Spark true gen material. And I find that it's just that nice, flexibility I think it has similar thickness to Invisalign but it just has this beautiful flexibility and it derotates really well it also I believe also puts torque very well it actually functions much better it performs much better than Invisalign so I don't like the true gen XR I think it's a very rigid material it's almost like a retainer material so I've now just uploaded this um on the cloud i've just i'm pretty happy with this i like everything so i've given my notes very nice and clear and we'll submit and here we go i hope you enjoyed watching this video thank you